Today on the We Invested podcast, we have Ivan Ans, and he is an Inc. 500 magazine international serial entrepreneur, as well as the founder of Captain's Family Office and the creator of the Philanthro Investors Phenomena. Ivan, how are you doing today? Very good, Wesley. Thanks for having me in your show. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, and before we get started, would you mind letting the people know how they can find you on the internet and social media? Yes. In, um, in the internet, you can go to philanthroinvestors.com. And in social media, you can um, follow me on, on Instagram at uh, Ivan Anz, uh, IG or in my LinkedIn also. Um, but the main website is philanthroinvestors.com. But you can make it to the website in a short link. And that short link is pi.today. So it's, uh, you know, pi for philanthropy investors. So pi.today. That's awesome. That's awesome. So let's just start from the top, man, and talk a little bit about, you know, where did you grow up and where are you from? I am originally from Argentina and I grew up in Argentina. And then I moved to the U.S. in 2012. That's awesome, man. And what was... You know, what was it like growing up in Argentina? How did it, you know, impact your outlook on life and success? Well, uh, growing up in Argentina was uh, very nice because um, I, the country itself presents very chal many challenges to, because of the changes of the politics and so on. There is not a stability in the rules. It's constant changes. So... It makes you an, an, a stronger entrepreneur to go to go through changes uh, because you need to become much more able uh, in how to handle situations in companies and so on. So I'm very thankful that I, I grew up in Argentina. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And so I see you have the awesome background behind you, man. So let's just talk a little bit more about the business and the company that you created. So, you know, what is Philanthro Investors Inc.? Philanthro Investors is an organization that connects investors with humanitarian causes. So you can grow your capital while helping others. You can invest with the purpose, not just invest. You can make money, but change people's lives at the same time, Wesley. And it's very unique because we have been doing it in housing, helping families live in their own homes for less than rent, while philanthropy investors are making between 8 to 12%. And we have been also making it in water. And that's, that's a, the, the, main, the main thing there. And then in water, we are recycling water in the planet. And then um, on environment, which is to help the littering, the tons of littering that are going to the oceans and the forests. Man, I think those are some incredible causes that you are helping to fight against and to solve for. Um, you know, how would you say that you got started in this industry? What what sparked your interest about philanthropy and, and creating philanthropy investors? Well, Wesley, when I was um, around uh, 2009, I was going through a whole different situations in my life, but I was mainly trying to not only make money, but also I was trying to, to, to see how I was, I was looking for, for a solution where I can not only make money, but change people's lives at the same time. I was looking for, for investment, for an investment that that it makes sense, Wesley, in the point that it's not only giving you money for money, but at the same time, it's improving the planet and the humanity. And I was not able to find that. I was like all day behind the computer. All day behind the computer. And um, yeah, that, that was the main the main point there like I was all day behind the computer and that uh, 
I was looking at numbers go up and down, investing in the markets, investing in speculative investments. And that was not life. Like being like sitting behind the computer, watching numbers go up and down in the screen. That's not life, come on, right? So that was what uh, prompted me to start seeking and asking God for a solution. And one day I was in the taking a shower. And when I was taking that shower, I received this God revelation, philanthropy investors. And he tells me, Ivan, in the future, people will be more conscious with money. They will not just throw it away through gambling, or they will not just invest for him, make money. They will put the money towards an area that is improving life. And uh, that's uh, actually what happened. And uh, yeah, here, and, and, and that's how it was born originally. I can tell you even more of the story. I just want to see what else would you like to know Wesley about, you know? No, I mean, I think that's an awesome concept. And, you know, it's something that's become very popular and very, uh, you know, just very popular today. People being more aware of where their money is going. People now are putting more focus on, you know, how their money is impacting the environment, impacting the future generations. So I feel like, you know, what you're doing with philanthropy investors is, you know, very current, very needed, very necessary right now. Um, especially with the climate that we're living in today, you know, you know, we hear about global warming, we hear about uh, wage gaps, we hear about the homeless population. So it sounds like your company is really tackling the the major problems in the world right now. That's totally correct, Wesley. Because if you research, and this was another revelation I had, because in 2014, this revelation, this uh revelation I have in um, Argentina, sorry, in, yeah, in, in, uh, in Argentina was my re revelation in relation to philanthropy investors in 2009. And then I started helping families live in their own homes, but then I moved to the US and in 2014, I started helping families live in their own homes and investors making between eight to 12% returns. But what happened was that in 2019, I had another God revelation. And that was that philanthropy investor was not only born to help families live in their own homes, which we have already right now, like 40, $48 million from investors in uh, 14 countries of the world that we are uh, managing for them, but they are making the key material decisions on their own portfolios while helping families live in their own homes. But in 2019, I made this, I had this cognition and the cognition, the, the, the realization was that many other areas in the planet also need support and help. And as you, I don't know if you know, Wesley, but I started researching after this God request that philanthropy investors was not born for helping only families, but was born to change the planet into a more positive direction. And when I realized that, I started researching and I find out that only 8% of the population lives in good air quality conditions. I discovered that 6,000 kids die from water-related diseases every single day. Every single day, Wesley. Every single day. And 80% of the water gets released untreated. And then I started researching more and I discovered that approximately 160 million people suffer from natural disasters every single year. Can you believe that? Man, it, you know, these are some 
you know, huge world issues that you're tackling right now. So, you know, just to just to have that that courage to attack such problems with such magnitude, you know, was there ever any times where you felt intimidated going after problems like of this magnitude, problems that are this large? Were you ever intimidated or do you feel like, man, this is something I can do if I really put my mind to it and put my energy into it, I can really help make the world a better place? You know, Wesley, I am a hardly hard believer that God will never give you a task which you cannot handle. So with that in mind, Wesley, I, I, I feel and I know that me with my team, not just me alone, we can revert the direction of where this planet is going. And let me jump into the into our water company. Origin Clear, which is a, a company that has the vision to revert to revert the water condition in the planet, and to to get it in a way that we can take. a place where it has not good water or dirty water in a lagoon, in a, in a pond, in different places, and get that situation revert. So imagine if you have water quality improvement on one side of the, the scene, and on the other side, you have the possibility of fixing it, but you can connect an investor with the possibility of improving water in the planet. What that looks like, how it looks like, is a, is a unique possibility giving the opportunity to someone that can really, really improve water in the planet to be able to do it with the money that they have earned and grow their capital and get dividends and profits from all that, from all that um, creation and energy of improving the water in the world. Through commercial and through residential in the future and so on, right? So yeah, that's that's basically the- No, and, and that's something that, we'll, that I definitely wanna dive deeper into a little bit later. But before we get into that, you know, I just want to, you know, mention, mention an interesting fact that uh, I came across during my research is that, you know, you have two companies that are Inc. 500 companies. And, you know, I know that that's, that's no small feat. So what exactly does that mean to be, to have, or to be a two-time Inc. 500 company Builder and creator. What is what exactly does that mean? And then what does that mean to you? Well, Wesley, that means in the Inc. 500 means that we are one of the fastest growing companies in the U.S. There is um, 28 million companies in the U.S. and there is 200,000 that apply for that ranking every single year. And from that 200,000, we made it into the position number 83 with my housing philanthropy investing company. Man, I mean, that's incredible. And it's, you know, what was that process like for you? Because another interesting fact that I came across is that, you know, you invest four hours per, per month growing your company. So, you know, how did you get your companies to this point where, you know, you're, you're eligible to be and you're awarded at Inc. 500 company, but also with, you know, investing four hours per month into growing these companies, because that, that just sounds incredible to me. And I, I know that people would like to hear more about that and learn, you know, what that means. Yes, Wesley, what, um, what that means is that when, when you are a founder in an organization, it's not the same that being a CEO. 
is different. It's two different positions. The founder is out there creating trust for the organization. The founder is out there looking for ways to take the organization to another level. And that means that he can absolutely create to the level of putting the future there for the team to take the organization to the next level, creating the context, not the content, creating the context for the organization to go to the next level. And then it's also giving the policy and the goals and aligning that so the organization can have that future existing. So when you arrive to that, it, it is a mindset change. It's a change of mind because you need to be able to let your an organization develop without you being the one that are doing it. And without you being the one that necessarily earn all the trophies for doing it. So it's just dependent on your, on your goals and what you are trying to achieve. Because if you are trying to have one company and just that and just be a war for that company yourself, that's one viewpoint. But if you are trying to create multiple organizations because you have a bigger vision and a bigger mission, then you must delegate into CEOs. No, man, I mean, and that's, that's incredible. And, you know, it, like you said, like you mentioned earlier, man, it just shows the bigger vision that you have for what it is that you're trying to accomplish here. But, you know, what I want to ask you is that, you know, how did you gain your business acumen? How did you get your business IQ? Where, how did you, you know, learn these valuable lessons that it's about the, the, you know, it's not all about the content, but about the concept and about the, the vision and the idea for it. How did you go about learning these specific lessons in order to become a Inc. 500 company? Well, the biggest, the biggest lessons, Wesley, that I, um, I encountered were lessons that were related to team, team development. And what I mean by that is that the team itself is there to create the business and develop the business into the next level. And if you, for example, Wesley, don't give a goal to your team, If you, don't, if you don't care for your people, they will not care for your business, right? So in 2017, I, I gave the team the goal of being in the Inc. 500. And then we start, and then I start caring for them to what were their needs or things like that. And, and they created the Inc. 500 company. It's not me. I give them the vision, I give them the goal. But then they created the organization, they created, they expanded the organization, they improved the systems and so on to achieve that goal. You see, both parts are needed. The goal maker or the, the dream maker and the reality makers, which are two different positions in an organization. It's not the same. Exactly. So, you know, it sounds to me that it's important to have a vision and to be able to you know, not only to have the vision, but to be able to successfully communicate that vision to your team, as well as, you know, have the the wherewithal to be able to implement the tools needed and the tasks needed in order to achieve that vision. You are totally, you are totally correct on that. It's, uh, it's absolutely, um, two different things and, and the tools are super needed. You, you need the tools, yes or yes, for that. That's awesome, man. And so, you know, one of my questions that I wanted to ask you is that, 
you know, what is the difference between philanthropy investing versus just investing? Well, investing is putting your money to in a place that will give you money back, right? And, you know, for a financial return. Philanthropy is putting your time and our money for the improvement of humanity without expecting a financial return. Philanthropy investing is investing your time and money or money, engaging emotionally to promote human welfare while earning a financial return. So it's both things. Exactly. So it sounds like it's a, a great way to, you know, like you like you were mentioning earlier, it's a great way to merge both worlds together. You're not only investing and earning money at the same time as you're helping the world, helping the economy and helping build these future generations and, and, and allowing them to have, you know, the same experience experiences, if not better experiences than we have today. And so, you know, something I think that's really key and really important, also really impressive that you mentioned is that, you know, the numbers that you mentioned were 8% to 10% returns, which are fantastic returns while making an impact in the world. Yes, that's, uh, that's totally correct. While making an impact in the world, Wesley. And that's the whole idea around it, is that, I want to invite you and your audience, Wesley, to really listen to yourself and awaken your philanthropy investor within and help the water in the planet and help families in the planet and help the environment because there is inside you, there is this, you know, you have the little uh, angel and you have the, the devil. And that angel is your philanthropy investor within. The, the devil is telling you, hey, now that you have money, go and buy another uh, sport car. And you know, you have a Porsche, now buy a Ferrari, and now add another sport car, and now buy 50 watches at the different brands, and then buy all these other mansion and a jet and a plane and all of that. But then that's, that's your, your devil talking to you. Your angel is telling you, which is your, finan your philanthropy investor within, is telling you, Hey, Wesley, or you know, if it gets on you, hey, why we want that? Let's sell all of these sport cars. Just keep one, just for the sake of enjoyment, because you like it. Let's sell all these other mansions and properties that you use. Let's sell the forty-nine watches and keep one, right? Mm -hmm. And let's philanthropy invest and help the planet go into a better direction. Yes, sir. You know, and I, I think another interesting point of view that you have is that, you know, water is now the new gold. So, you know, how can your money work towards improving the world's critical conditions? Well, it's, um, water is life. And Water is really the new world, if you think about it. Because how, what, is, what is more needed in the world, water or gold? Water. <laughs> exactly. So if you start researching and do your research and understand the problems with water in the planet, and if you understand the problems that we have and how scarce it is for the amount of people that we have in the world and so on, it's not, it's not that we are lacking water. The problem is that the quality of water is decreasing. As the quality of water decreases, then what happens is that we get to a point that 25 years from now, we will not have the amount of the water necessary to survive. And if we don't take care of the water right now, 
what will happen in the future is it will be just uh, a problem that we will not be able to fix. So Origin Clear is a company that allows you to invest in water. And the reason that allows you to invest in water is because if you have a possibility to be in, ex in exchange with water, you have the possibility to show to the world that you are not only taking 51 liters of water per day, which is the average per day that we consume, but if you also are able to show to the world that you are giving back that 51 liters of high quality water that you put in your mouth, not through, not through organic elements that come out of your body, but through real water quality with the resources that you gain through your work and you re you take 51 liters of water during one day, but you gave back 51 liters of water to the humanity through your investment. Why, why 51? Let's give back 100 liters of high quality water to the humanity through your work and through your money, but take only 51. Then every person in the planet doing that, it will create a better condition. So Origin Clear with our Water is the new gold future vision allows you to do that. No, and I agree with that 1000%, you know, because it's like if our quality of water decreases, then our quality of life decreases, you know. Um, so I definitely think that's a, you know, just another important initiative that you're tackling, you know, and that you're bringing awareness to and just kind of shining that light on it and letting people know, hey, this is important. We need this for the future and we need this to be able to sustain life going forward and not only just life, but a quality life. Um, you know, but one interesting position that you have is something that kind of, you know, made me look at it with question marks is that, you know, you said that there's basically a myth of passive income and that is holding us back. So, you know, what exactly do you mean by that? You know, that there's a myth of passive, of passive income and how do you think that is holding us back? Well, I think um, it is holding us back because Wesley, the, the main reason, if you look at it, one day I was listening someone say passive income equals financial freedom. Passive income equals financial freedom. And I look and look at it. And I say for myself, hey, something is wrong with that. Because passive income means that you are laying out in a beach doing nothing and receiving a check every month. And freedom, and, and financial freedom means freedom financially, right? Right. And I researched the definition of the word freedom, Wesley. And the word freedom actually is not at all being laid out in the beach doing nothing. Freedom is like fighting for the constitution. Freedom is being engaged with what you are doing. Freedom is creating your future. Freedom is having knowledge, having control of your environment. Freedom is having fulfillment. So true financial freedom, really, it does not come with cash flow and capital growth and that's it. True financial freedom comes also with knowledge, control, responsibility, 
engaging, engagement, fulfillment. It's just a very unique thing. And you accomplish it when you engage yourself emotionally, when you become a philanthropy investor, not when you are giving your money to someone to manage it. And then this guy comes back and say, hey, you know, I lost your money. Then now you're blaming that guy because you didn't took any responsibility. So now low responsibility equals low ha happiness. High responsibility is high happiness. So that's why with your investments, you need to engage emotionally. You need to get involved because that's life. It's not just giving money away and doing nothing. No, man, and I think that's a very interesting perspective and I've never actually looked at it that way. You know, when I think about financial freedom, I think about exactly what you said, you know, laying on the beach and just receiving money, but, you know, actually having that responsibility, actually having that knowledge actually having the control and the power to change something is the ultimate freedom to help others is the ultimate freedom and where the ultimate peace comes from as well. So I think you have a very interesting perspective on what exactly freedom means, you know? Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly right. And I, I hope people discover this because there is so many gurus that are talking, you know, selling this like passive income, financial freedom, passive right. income, financial freedom, right? But the freedom is actually knowing, hey, I'm helping, you know, I'm helping others live a better life and I'm helping the, you know, the, the uh, ecosystem and I'm helping the world all at the same time while still making money and earning these returns that I, that I want. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, I definitely appreciate your point of view. And, uh, yeah, man, I mean, I think it's just, it's something for people to think on. It's something for people to think about, you know. Uh, yeah, yes. man, it's, it, it's super interesting. But, you know, one thing that you mentioned was an important piece to building your, you know, two Inc. 500 companies is just team development. Being able to develop a team, being able to, to effectively communicate your vision to your team. So, you know, what I wanted to ask you is that, you know, you kind of you kind of hit on this before, but what would you say is the importance of having a team and how did you focus on building your team? Well, um, the, the main way to do it, Wesley, is to allow the team to develop and to have your intention of never solving a problem for your team. Because you're there to be a light of guidance and to be there for them and to listen to them and to just help them come up with solutions. That's the ideal scene. Now, Ideally seen, you don't want to be solving problems for them. Because if you solve pre, you know, your team's problems, you're taking, the, you're taking life out of them because solving problems is part of life. Very true, very true. And I mean, you know, that's another important, you know, important point that you're mentioning solving problems is a part of life, you know, and, and, and it seems like that's really what you focused on building your career around is just solving these problems that a lot of people don't necessarily want to take the time or take the energy to focus on solving, you know, from, you know, from, you know, your, your family office company to philanthropy invest, these are solving problems that people don't necessarily want to put the energy into solving themselves. But with you solving such large problems, I can only imagine that you've come into, you know, several roadblocks and learn several lessons while trying to solve these major problems. So what would you say are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned throughout your career, throughout your entrepreneurship journey? My biggest lessons were number one is don't solve problems for your team. Mm -hmm. Number two is let your team expand the organization. 
number three is be there be there always for your team never abandon your team and number four is get people get ambassadors for your brand for your company and the and number five do everything legal yes everything 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 legal by the law by the dot of the law for sure and those are some definitely definitely some important lessons especially the doing everything legal because you know like i just mentioned earlier you know when you're tackling um when you're tackling economic problems i'm sure there are as well as financial problems there are so many different laws different paperwork different things that come into effect that come into play so having your paperwork is not something it's not something that people mention all the time on the podcast but having your paperwork having your business in order having your companies correctly um you know established is very very important uh and it's you know it's something that more that every entrepreneur should focus on and understand to have their business in order and to have their paperwork in order as well. That's totally correct, my friend. That's totally correct. You yes, know, uh, have, have everything, you know, have everything in order, have everything under the rules because you will have less problems that you don't, you want to be exactly. focusing on expanding your business, not in solving these little problems because you <laughs> didn't follow the rules. Exactly. Yes, sir. So, you know, how do you define success as an entrepreneur? I define success when I see my team improving their life. When I see my team improving their life, uh, that's how I define success. And when I see my clients achieving what they wanted to achieve, and that's that's uh, when they came to my company. That's how I define success. And so, you know, what would you say is the most important reason for your success? The most important reason for my success is to trust my perceptions. Yes. Follow my intuition, my perceptions. Yes. And to... Listen, listen to my team also, but at the same time, you know, combine that with my perceptions. Yeah, man. And that's one piece of advice that my older brother gave me that I always hold on to is, you know, always trust your gut instincts. Always follow your gut. If something feels right, do it. If something doesn't feel right, do not do it. So uh, I think that's a great piece of advice. Trust your, your perceptions. Trust you know, just trust your first instinct. And uh, I think, you know, you'll be successful in doing that. But, you know, another question that I want to ask you is that how would you like for people to remember you and your companies? You know, I say, I would like the companies to, to exist beyond me, which I am, a comp I have accomplished that in some of my companies already, that they continue to expand doesn't matter if I am involved or not. And then um, I will also like to be remembered as someone that came to, you know, shift the world into a more positive direction for the humanity. That's awesome. You know, when, you know, something that caught my eye, something that's interesting to me is that, you know, you're a serial entrepreneur. So, you know, is, is that, is that a skill that you were born with? Is that a skill since you've had that you've had since childhood? Or is that a skill that developed over time? Just understanding how to run different businesses and how to how to um, juggle multiple things at once, multiple companies at once. Yes. Um, it's a skill that developed over time, Wesley. It develops over time and you just nurture it and nurture it and, and just create and create and expand and so on. So everybody can do it. That's what I believe. It's 
it's not for everyone, but everybody can do it if they have the desire to. It's one of the most fun games that I have played. It's the serial entrepreneur game. Exactly, exactly. And so, you know, what is the future of Philanthro Investors and Captain's Family Office look like to you? Well, Philanthro Investors, it's becoming one of the top impact investment firms in the world. And, um, and it's moving masses of investors from traditional investing to philanthropy investing is getting involved kids to be philanthropy investors since they are in the young age. Philanthropy investors is um, supporting companies all over the world in the 10 different industries that are life essentials where philanthropy investors can support life essential industries and corporations to take the, the world into a more positive direction. It's an organization that has developed the companies to become international and grow uh, big to live their missions and visions towards the next uh, level, right? Uh, like to be worldwide visions. And yeah, we are, it's, it's creating a huge impact in the world. And it's an organization that the world is proud of and supports. Man, that's incredible. Ivan, I wanna thank you so much for your time, man. And just, you know, for the companies that you've created, really bringing awareness um, about, you know, certain, situations about certain conditions you know just letting people know that it is possible to invest in our water supply it is possible to invest in housing for others you know because a lot of people may you know the news and the media has people so focused on uh investing in tech and investing in gold or invest in oil and just do things that only put money in your pocket and and don't worry about anything else, but by you bringing awareness to the people that, to let them know it's possible to, to make a change in your community. It's possible to make a change in the world. I think what you're doing is amazing. And uh, I think it's very much needed in our environment and in our communities today. So I commend you for, you know, the companies that you've created. Thank you, Wesley. It has been a pleasure to speak with you and to be able to share this message with your audience. And um, I wish you everybody a, an amazing end of March, 2022, and let's uh, all work thinking how we can do better and add value to others. That's awesome, man. Thank you, Ivan. You're welcome.